you and good evening. Uh, actually, motivation and happiness, it could also be motivation for happiness. It works in both ways. If uh, I choose this tema of motivation, it is because most of the people I meet of old, of all age, are often bothered or questioning their own motivation. What do they want to achieve? How they want to achieve it? Which path could help them to reach which kind of goal? There are a lot of questions which remain in the mind of many people at any time of their life. Tema motivacija sam mi ispravila zato da kad srčujem koliko ljudi ki se sa starosti, ki se pogosto sprašuje, ki pogosto muče vprašanje motivacije, o tem kakšna je njihova motivacija, kaj želijo doseči, kako doseči to, kar želijo, katera pot je tista, ki jih vodi do cilja, kakšen stok je ta njihov cilj. Veliko je vprašanje, številna vprašanja so, ki imajo ljudi v svojem umu. There are a certain amount of questions that we call existential questions. Like where I come from, what I am meant to be, what should I do of my life, and so on. A lot of important questions and very few places where actually it is possible to discuss this kind of matters, this, this kind of topics. Uh, schools and universities and social actors will mostly orientate their explanation or their motivation towards the survival in life, survival in society, how to gain money, how to have a big house, how to have a big car, how to have a well-paid job and so on. But at one moment of our life, definitely, whether we got all this or not, it's not enough. There is the feeling that we can do something more, something higher, something above the materialistic world, about the mind, about compassion, about kindness and for this of course we need to seek for a proper path a proper lineage of teaching transmission to be sure to get uh, information clear information clear answers Veliko ljudi se sprašuje tudi tisto čisto eksistencijalno vprašanje, odkot prihajamo, kakšna je naša naloga v življenju, kaj je sploh potrebno narediti s tem življenjem, zakaj ga živimo. Veliko je zelo pomembnih vprašanj, pogosto je zelo malo prostora namenjenega razpravi v teh vprašanjih, šole, univerze, socialni delovci in podobno, se pogosto razpravo usmerjajo nekako motivacijo v samo preživetje, o to, kako lahko zasluži za dosti denarja, kako si lahko stvariš dom, izkošen dom, kako najdeš dobro plačeno službo. Vendar v nekem trenutku se znajdeš v življenju, ko pa ne glede na to, ali vse to že imaš ali ne, ko se ti zdi, da to vse to ni za dosti, da obstaja še kaj več, da biš občutek, da je za vsem skupaj še nekaj več, nekaj višjega, nekaj, kar gre preko, on kraj tega materialnega, nekaj, kar je morda povezano z zumom, s očutjem, s prijaznostjo. In zato se potem na katero dočejo poiskati neko pot, morda učenja ali transmisijo nekih učenj, 
ki jim podajo jasne informacije, jasne odgovore na vprašanje. When these fundamental questions are not well answered, not well explained, we find ourselves sometimes in a kind of psychological despair. Uh, like if we might have everything from the materialistic point of view, but something central is missing. And I can see that when this is missing, this motivation is missing, then the mind goes in every possible direction searching for something to hook on and it often end up in depressions or in alcohol, drugs or any kind of wandering in our life, wandering in our thoughts. So to say, this question of motivation is fundamental. Da kratko na to vrstno vprašanje ne dobimo jasnih odgovorov, ne dobimo um, jasnih razlag. In tem se pogosto pojavi nekakšen psihološki obuk, nekako imamo po eni strani vse materialne, zdi se, da imamo vse, a vseeno se zdi, da manjka po tudi strani neka srčika um, življenja, da manjka, in to je ta motivacija, ki manjka in potem um, izgubljeno išče več čas nekaj, nekaj, če se, se lahko okline in pogosto potem sledi depresija, alkohol, droge, um, tavamo v življenju, tavamo z našimi mislimi in vse to se pogosto zgodi zaradi tega, ker enostavno ne bodimo jasnih odgovor, odgovorov, na, ne najdemo jasnih odgovorov na ta pomembno vprašanje. There is one thing that we usually have all in common. It is the quest for happiness. When we ask people what they would like to achieve in their life, it tends to go towards happiness. The problem is that we don't necessarily define happiness in the same way. There are people who think that happiness is wealth, and some people who will understand that happiness is much more something which has to do with the mind with peace in the mind, with stability of the mind, with mental quietness. So since wealth and material security does not exclude to achieve this mental quietness, if we understand it right and if we understand it correctly, it seems that it is much preferable to focus on our mind, on the states of our mind, and to progressively develop this kind of inner peace. Eno od stvari, ki je vsem skupna, je ta, da vsi iščemo srečo. Če bomo ljudi okoli sebe vprašali, če se si želijo, bo nekako odgovor na koncu od vseh ta, da si želijo sreče. Vendar pa vsi sveden ne podajo enake definicije sreče. Nekateri verjamejo, da jim bo bogatstvo prineslo srečo, drugi pa morda srečo bolj povezujo z umom oziroma z merom v umu, stabilnostjo uma oziroma umerjenostjo. Uma. In, in seveda pa je dobro, da razumemo tudi to, da bogatstvo, da neka materialna varnost ne izključuje umerjenosti uma. Torej, tudi če pravilnost razumemo, k- k- kakšne stvari so, potem um, se morda raj odločimo, da se bomo osredotočili na to, kakšno stanje je naš um in poskušamo razvijati notranji mer. We are in a society which wants everything fast and quick. Yes, there is instantaneous coffee, there is fast food. Many things can be just bought immediately. You want it, you go to a shop, you get it. But this has two inconveniences. The first is that we, we tend to lack patience. And the second is that we think that everything can be bought. But definitely happiness is not something that can be bought. 
Pleasure can. Happiness cannot. Pleasure lasts a few seconds, a few minutes, a few hours. Happiness, the true one, is an everlasting experience. And that one cannot be bought. That one can be can be pursued through a spiritual path. When I talk about spirituality here, I'm not talking about specific religion. I'm talking about the sense of spirituality, the sense of sacredness in our life, in our lives. Since we have different approach to life and different way to uh, deal with events in our life. Наш, наша дружба, наши дружба и какой то куда си живим, он сега зелена хитро, все же имамо хитро храно, имамо эспрессо, он тако напрекар кули, же потребуем, а че са кули си живим, отидем в търговино и си то купим. И ту сте две слаби плети наша дружба, тогда имамо поманканье, имамо задости в кратежливости и да по други страни мислимо да легко се купимо. А среча се не да купити. Сви да ужитак си легко купимо. Вендар среча, ки би траяла заведно, не. Ужитак си легко купимо, па бу та траяла околико часа, некай секунд, некай ур, некай дни. Вендар ти сте прави долгорочне среча, не моремо купити. И равно то е та долгорочна, благотрайна среча е тиста, ки о ищемо на, на духовни поти. Сви да тук говорим о духовности, о духовни поти, не, не говорим о небени специфични религии. Не, тъмя, че тистам обчутку нечеса светега в, в нашем живлению. Тоже тистам посебнем обчутку нечеса посебно в нашем живлению, не гледе на то, какшен пристоп имамо, на какшен начин се лютевамо различни догодки в нашем живлению. Our consciousness exists since time that our mind, our brain cannot even understand. In the text it is written beginningless time. And since the time of our existence we have been running for different type of happiness. And misled by the disturbed mental factors and disturbed emotions Life after life we have taken some fortunate rebirth and some unfortunate rebirth. We have been running, we have been engaged in any kind of action and activity. I think we have experienced all what could be experienced in this world. There is nothing that we have not gone through since the time we do exist. Though, after all these kinds of experience, we don't seem to have found the real peace in our mind. We don't seem to have found the real happiness in our life, because we are still searching for it. So, it leads me to think that all what we have done in the past, life after life, existence after existence, was not in the right direction, in the direction of long-lasting happiness. We have done a certain amount of good things, of course, fortunately. We have done a certain amount of less good things as well. Altogether, in this life, we are human beings, and we have what we call a precious human river. Why precious? Because not only we are human, but we have an access to spirituality. We have all the faculty, we understand. We are not impaired in, the, in this understanding. We can go towards teachers and path. This is a precious thing. This is one of the most precious things that we have. Наша завист обстая вже толико часа да наш ум, наші беседили прави, да наш ум, наші мошкані, в бисто стоп не море розуміти, коліко часа є житло, прави, да наша завист обстая от часу брез зачетка. І все от так рад, от часу брез зачетка, наш 
um, oziroma mi neprestajno um, iščemo to srečo, pa se nas potem nekako vedno zavedajo naše misli, naše motena čustva. In v vsem tem času smo seveda imeli nekatera srečna, nekatera bolj, nekatera manj srečna rojstva, a veš čas smo nekako tekli naprej, iskali to srečo in v vsem tem času izkusili tudi čisto vse, kar se da izkusiti na, na tem svetu. Mislim, da dejansko ni več ničesar več, kar, um, kar bi lahko izkusili, česar nismo izkusili v vseh svojih življenji. A po vseh teh izkušnjah očitno še vedno nismo dosegli tiste resnične sreče, resničnega miru, glede na to, da še vedno iščemo leti. Um, in vse to Zdaj, vse ta, tega mislim, da lahko rečemo, da, lahko rečemo, da kljub temu, da smo življenje za življenjem uh, spremeli, uh, spremeli te sreči, da očitno nismo šli v pravo smer, glede na to, da še nismo dosegli takšne, uh, takšne sreče. Seveda smo v vsem tem času naredili veliko dobrega, včasih smo jih skorili tudi kaj manj dobrega in kakorkoli že sedaj smo se znašli tukaj, smo, smo ljudje, smo človeška bitja in pravimo tudi, da imamo dragoceno um, človeško življenje, dragoceno zaradi tega, ker imamo dostop do, do duhovnosti, do duhovne poti, dragoceno zaradi tega, ker imamo vse sposobnosti, da lahko duhovnost razumemo, da lahko odidemo k, k učiteljem in to je tisto, kar je resnično dragoceno v našem življenju. There is a law which apply everywhere in this universe, which is called the law of causality. The law of causality means I create causes and I experience their result. It's nothing more than the law of karma, as explained in some traditions. Already on a very conventional level we can see, of course, the way we interact with people, the way we act in job, in family, or in streets, have, has some consequences, has some uh, results. So all what we are doing does bring some result. At first, it is when we think. Whenever we think, we produce a type of energy. Scientifically, it's proven that when our brain functions, it produces some type of energy. Where does this energy go? Energy never disappears. It is only transformed. It is transformed into what? And it goes where? According to the tradition I follow, we believe that every time we think, we create a cause, we create a seed, we create a potential and all these potentials are stored on our own minds. They are piling up on our minds. And when they reach a certain amount, positive or negative, they produce a result. This result is nothing more than whatever we perceive. All what we perceive with our six senses the five physical senses and the mental sense are the result, are the experience of what we have accumulated ourselves since life and life which has piled up and that we are entering in contact with day after day. This is in brief the law of causality. Obstajen zakon, zakon vzročnosti, ki velja vse posod. In ta, kar ta zakon vzročnosti pravi je to, da um, sam, sem tist, da jaz ustvarjam vzroke in jaz sem potem tudi tisti, ki izkusim rezultate. Včasih temu zakonu pravimo tudi zakon karme. Um, in že na konvencionalni rani lahko vidimo, kako podeljuje, kako se, kako se, kakšne so naše dejanja v različnih situacijah, kakšni um, kakšne so naši odnosi z drugimi, vidimo, da vse to prinaša potem neke posledice, da vse to da nekakšne rezultate v našem življenju. In 
prva stvar, prvi vzrok, ki ga ustvarimo, je že tako, da mislimo. Če ustvarimo neko, ko se nam poraja neka misel, je s tem se poraja, oziroma proizvedamo na kakšno energijo. In to je tudi znanstveno dokazano. Dokazali so, da vsakič, ko naši moždani delujejo, se ustvari neka energija. Kaj pa se spodi, kam gre potem ta energija? Gleda to, da energija se ne izniči, ne nastane nič. Kam gre ta energija? Pretvori se, v kaj se pretvori? V moji tradiciji, v tradiciji, ki jaz sledim, verjamemo oziroma mislimo, da se ti vzroki oziroma semena in potencijal hranjo v našem umu, da se nekako kupičijo na našem umu in potem, ko se nekakšen pozitivan ali negativan izkupiček oziroma kup teh vzrokov nabere, da jo ti rezultat. In rezultat vsega tega dejansko, vse to, kar mi dojemamo, vse to, kar izkusimo, vse, kar dojemamo z našimi šestimi čutimi, pravno, torej imamo pet telesnih in potem počest je naš um. Vse to, kar dojemamo z našimi šestnimi čuti, je rezultat naših preteklih dejanj, dejanj, ki smo jih storili v prejšnjih življenju, življenju, pa v življenju, vse to, kar izkusimo, iz njiva odan v tem življenju. To je nekako kratka razlaga tega, kaj je zakon zročnosti. In to je zakon zročnosti give us back a certain sense of responsibility. Responsibility because we have quickly done to accuse the others for whatever discomfort or suffering we are experiencing. But if we understand how the law of causality works, we have a part of responsibility in all what we are experiencing. Another thing that this law of causality brings us is to understand the true nature of the reality, the true nature of what we call reality. Most of the time, when we see an object, we don't question what we see. Our eye seems to enter in contact with this screen, for example, and it's a fact in our mind that this screen exists the way it appears to us, independently from us. Like if, when I will leave the room, this screen will still be there, as if this screen was there before. How do we know then? Is it sure? Is it clear that whatever you perceive around you exists before you see it and will exist after you will have left the place? These are questions that usually we don't really ask ourselves. But one thing which is interesting with the development of the quantum physics is that it goes exactly in this direction. What says of the quantum physics at some point is that the old universe might be very blur. Blur because full of potentials. Blur because source of many different possibilities. Yet, each phenomena which is observed is then fixed. You look in one direction, things become clear. They become clear according to the causes you have accumulated. It means, in other words, that the experiences that we have in this life, that we are going through, we are creating them. The state of mind that we have is what creates what we will experience and the way we experience phenomena. Take two persons we have to go from building A to building B, and it's raining. One person will really be annoyed. One drop of rain on the clothes, on the hair, on the face, on the makeup, 
is really annoying. And that person will generate a very annoyed state of mind, close to anger, eventually hatred against the drops of rain. How stupid is that to get angry against the rain? That person will go through the rain, reach the other building and be, will be really unhappy. The other person on the other side say, well, doesn't matter after all, just rain, it will dry up, I'm not made out of sugar. So go through and reach the other side with a happy state of mind. That person will have accumulated, will have created a positive type of energy, which will result in a happy phenomena in the time to come. Whereas the unhappy and hateful state of mind generates a source of future suffering. Now we can ask ourselves, which kind of future do I want? Pleasant or unpleasant? Going towards peace, happiness or towards more suffering? If we answer that question, we can go to the next step of our motivation. Zdravo nas so vzgodine, kakšen odčutek odgovornosti. In to, kar pogosto zelo hitro nekako preložimo krivdo na druge in ko obtožimo za naše nezadovoljstvo, za naše trpljenje. Vendar, če razumemo, kako te stvari delujo, kako ta zakon zročnosti deluje, potem razumeš, da v bistvu nosiš ti odgovorno za vse tisto, kar, kar izkusiš. Zato nam ta Po drugi strani nam ta zakon tudi pomaga razumeti, kakšna je prava narava resničnosti oziroma vse tistega, če mu mi pravimo resničnost. Sto, ker večina časa, ko vidimo nek objekt, recimo ta ekran tu, si mislimo, da, da, da imamo to kot ne, ne, neko dejstvo, da ta um, objekt, ta ekran obstaja, da obstaja neodvisno od nas na takšen način, da recimo, če greme skupim ven iz tega prostora, bo ta verja, smo prepričani in um, popolnoma prepričani in se naslišujemo o tem, da bo ta ekran še naprej ostal tu in da je bil tu že preden smo mi stopili v sobo. Vendar, kako to lahko vemo? Smo res popolnoma, kako smo lahko tako prepričani v to? Kako smo lahko prepričani v to, da ta obstaj, da obstaj, obstaj predam, smo stopili v sobo in da bo ta obstaj, ko bomo šli um, iz sobe. Ne moramo biti resnično v to prepričani. In zanimiva dognanja v kvantni fiziki se da je nekako gredo um, vse bolj v, v to smer. Um, pravijo, da je um, da je vesolje nekako polno različnih potencijalov, polno nekako zamedljeno zaradi tega, ker je polno potencijala, polno um, različnih možnosti. Um, vendar pa je vsak pojav resnici fiksen in če se potem usmeriš v eno smer, če pogledaš v eno smer, potem se stvari razbistrijo, postanejo bolj jasne. Um, in to je nekako t- skladno z, z tem, gre v, v, oziroma to, te stvari postanejo jasno skladno z zroki, ki smo si jih nabrali. Torej, um, vse izkušnje, um, vse izkušnje, ki smo, ki jih imamo, vse, kar doživimo tu, smo dejansko mi tisti, ki smo, ki smo jih ustvarili v preteklosti. In tem, ko naš, naše stanje uma sedaj, je tisto, ki ustvarja zroke za to, kar, kar bomo izkusili v prihodnje. Imam, če imamo na primer dve osebe, dve osebe, ki obim um, morate priti do ene hiše in zunaj dežuje. Um, imamo lahko eno osebo, ki na primer je, um, se že vznemerja, ker zunaj dežuje, ker um, bo držna katrica uničila um, make-up in je, se že skoraj um, jezna na, na drž in že skoraj sovraži drž, kako na umno je to, da, da sovražimo drž. In potem bo prišla na, na cilj, bo prišla do te zgradbe in seveda bo nezadovoljna. Potem imamo pa lahko drugo osebo, ki je popolnoma merna, ki pravi, pa dobro, nima veze, se nisem iz sladkore, nisem iz cokra, pač grem do hiše in pride do hiše z nekim umerenim oziroma čisto zadovoljnim umom. In na takšen način ustvari pozitivno, pozitivno energijo in 
ta pozitivna energija, ko potem dala rezultat prihodnosti, ki bo prijetan, ki bo pozitivan. Po drugi strani pa bo druga oseba s svojim nezadovoljstvom v umu, ki ga bo čutila takrat, ki ga bo takrat izkučala, bo, ki bo imela s svojim umu takrat sovraštvo, jezo, bo s tem ustvarila ver svojega trpljenja v prihodnosti. In to je morda dobro, da se sedaj vprašamo, kaj, če se si dejansko želimo, če se si želim, si želim prihodnosti, ne če se prijetnega ali ne če se neprijetnega. Si želim več miru ali si želim več trpljenja. In potem, ko najdemo odgovore na to, gremo lahko, lahko naredimo nasledan korak v naši motivaciji. The second step in asking ourselves about motivation is we are not alone in this world, as you might have noticed. It's, it's full of beings, it's full of sentient beings. There is our self, there are many, many others. What do we aim at? Gaining only a satisfaction in life for ourselves? Or helping the others to find their own way to happiness. Experience shows that when we are concerned by ourselves, we are rarely happy. When we look at the tip of our nose at any moment of the day, self-centered on only our own life, or eventually the life of a little circle around us, we find a lot of source of insatisfaction, a lot of unhappiness. Whereas, when we try to dedicate our time and energy to help the others, then the mind tend to be much more satisfied and much happier. Happier because instead of focusing on our little self, we extend our mind, we extend our help, we extend our energy towards the others, towards as many people as possible. Thus, creating positive type of energy. And positive type of energy can also only benefit us. So, if we decide to be egoistic in a way, at least let's be wisely egoist. Wisely egoist means at least if I want to get good in my life, I will dedicate my time and my energy for the others. I know it will bring me good. It doesn't mean I do it only for that, but I know it. This is a kind of Egoism, because we expect a good return, but it is wise, much better than to do everything only for ourselves. Biti, prejok samo mi in potem so tu še mnogi drugi. Z to je pomembno, da se vprašamo, kakšen je, kakšen je naš cilj. Je naš cilj to, da zadovoljimo sebe, da zadovoljimo svoje želje, ali pa želimo morda pomagati tudi drugim, da najdejo srečo. Dokazano je že bilo, da takrat, ko iščemo srečo samo zase, takrat, ko mislimo, samo nase ali pa mislimo samo na njih ozak, krog ljudi, da so takrat ljudje pogosto bolj, da to prinaša več nezadovoljstva, več vzrokov, razlogov za to, da so ljudje nezadovoljni in nesrečni. Medtem, ko takrat, ko svoj čas, svojo energijo namenimo um, pomoči drugim, takrat je um veliko bolj zadovoljen, veliko bolj umerjen. Zakaj? Zdaj tega, ker na mesto tega, da bi se neprestano osredotočal na se, se nekako svo, svojo energijo, svoj čas, svoje misli namenimo drugim. Na takšen način ustvarimo pozitivno energijo in seveda taka energija, pozitivna energija ne more biti drugega kot korisna tudi za nas. Torej, če tudi smo sebični, 
budimo vsaj modro, sebični, torej pravimo nekaj modrosti in torej, če želimo, in če želimo stvoriti nekaj dobrega zase, potem namenimo svoj čas drugim, pomagajmo drugim, zaradi tega, ker, vsaj zaradi tega, ker bomo da je to dobro potem tudi za nas. Torej, da na takšen način pomagamo drugim, že to je bolj modro kot to, da mislimo samo nas. It brings us to another understanding is that happiness is not just a goal, but in many ways it is also a path. So not just to run after happiness by many different ways, but to try to experience already from now on happiness and to go towards greater happiness. If we look at our lifestyle, if we look at our mind, we can see that most of the time we are making ourselves unhappy. We develop worries, we develop concerns, we develop attachments through which we are constantly unhappy. The mind is jumping from thoughts to thoughts, has very much difficulty to focus, very much difficulty to be in peace. And thus, we are not happy. So you have some people who enter in a spiritual path or who claim to follow a spiritual path since years and years. And their goal, as they say, is happiness. But when you look at them, they don't radiate happiness at all. Why? They have missed one point. It's not only a goal, it's a path. And if you want to reach that goal, you have to follow that path. Pomeno pa je tu, in vse to nas potem privedo od tega, da razumemo, da sreča ni samo cilj, ki ga želimo doseči, temveč je sreča tudi pot, na številne načine je pot, po kateri hodimo. Torej, ni pomeno to, da se vs čas tečemo, gonimo za, za to srečo, vendar da poskušamo dejansko tudi izkusiti srečo da in na takšen način um, skozi izkustva sreče nekako gremo v smeri te večje, više oblike sreče. Zato tega, ker um, če pogledamo recimo naše življenje, če, če samo pogledamo naš um, bomo hitro videli, da smo mi tisti, ki se vse čas onesrečujemo. Mi smo tisti, ki se vse čas povzročamo skrbi, ki se navežemo in smo zaradi tega nekako neprestajno nesrečni. Um skače z ene misli na drugo, težko se osredotočimo, težko se umirimo in zaradi vsega tega smo potem nesrečni, nismo zadovoljni. Potem imamo pa tudi številne ljudi, ki nekako um, stopijo na neko pot, ki morda dolga leta hodijo po neki poti in pravijo, da njihov cilj doseči srečo, pa nekako se ne zdi, da bi oni odali kaj dosti srečo od sebe. Zakaj? Zaradi tega, ker, ravno zaradi tega, ker sreča ni samo cilj, da več je sreča tudi pot, po kateri hodimo. So that these are two important points to define the motivation we have in life, what we aim at, what we want to understand, what we want to discover, what we want to reach, and for whom. And the second point is happiness. What is real happiness? And to understand that it is not just something for years after, but something that we can already right now taste and develop and increase as our spiritual path goes. Torej, to sta ti dve pomembni točki, ki jih je, ki jih je potrebno upoštevati, to znamen vprašanje, na katero je potrebno odgovoriti, takrat, ko poskušamo določiti, definirati našo motivacijo. Torej, kakšen je naš cilj, kaj je tisto, kar želimo razumeti, kaj je tisto, kar želimo odkriti, 
predvsečejo odkriti, in za koga si želimo vse to storiti. Potem drugi del je ta sreča, kaj, odgovoriti se na vprašanje, kaj je tista resnična sreča. A je to nekaj, kar se bo zgodilo, kar želim doseči čez mnoga leta, ali je to morda tisto, kar lahko že sedaj v tem trenutku izkusim in se bo potem po poti, ko bom hodil po poti, ta sreča samo še krepila večer. In dealing with these two topics of motivation and happiness, let's always remember that we are the creator of what we are experiencing. When you take a stone, you throw it in the air, it falls down. Whether you believe that it will fall down or not, it does, in this conventional reality. In that same conventional reality, when you would throw a thought in the air, it falls down, whether you believe in it or not. Whatever we think makes what we perceive. It does not just influence the way we perceive it, it makes it, like in a dream. In a dream, if you see that screen, you will touch that screen, you will feel that screen, you will use that screen. You will not ask yourself if it exists or not, because it will be obvious. Then you will wake up and will say, ah, that was just a dream. And then in this so-called awakened reality, you will go towards a screen, and you will touch the screen, and you will feel the screen, and you will use the screen, and you will not ask yourself if that screen exists or not, the way you think it does. This is what we call the fundamental mistake. The fundamental mistake is duality. Duality is what makes us to create causes, to create karma. Why do we create karma? Because our mind moves from one point to what it believes to be another point. If we would understand that all the phenomena that we are entering in contact with are of the same nature, all the phenomena are of the same nature, all the phenomena and my mind are of the same nature, then the mind does not move anymore from one point to what it believes to be external, not moving, it does not create energy. Then the law of causality stops to apply to us, to our mind, and the mind finds its way to freedom. Ko govorimo o tega tema, o motivaciji in o sreči, se moramo spomniti, da smo mi stvaritelj naših lastnih izkušenj, da smo stvaritelj tega, kaj doživljamo. Torej, če tudi nekako tako, če vržemo v zrak kamen, bo ta padel na tla, ne glede na to, ali mi verjamemo to, da bo res padel na tla ali ne. Tačno se stvari v tej realnosti in enako je v tej realnosti z mislim. Če neko misel vržemo v zrak, če se nam poraja, bo ta padla na tla, bo obrodila nek rezultat. Način oziroma vse naše misli, vse tisto, kar mislimo, je tisto, kar ustvarja vse to, kar percepiramo, vse, kar dojemamo. In ne samo način, na kakršnega dojemamo, pojave okoli sebe, tem več same pojave, ki jih dojemamo. To je predližno tako kot v vsanjah. Če naprimer bi videli ta ekran v vsanjah, bi se ga dotaknili, bi ga uporabljali, tako kot in se sploh ne bi vprašali, ali ta ekran dejansko obstaja ali ne. Potem pa bi se zbudili, pa bi se rekli, a ja, sveda, vse so bile samo vsanje. In enako v tej resničnosti, vidimo ta ekran, se ga dotaknemo, ga uporabljamo in ne pomislimo, če ta dejansko obstaja na takšen način, resnično obstaja na takšen način, na kakršnega, da mi mislimo, da ta obstaja. In mi pravimo, da gre pred tem, da je to ta osnovna napaka, dualnost, ki jo, dvojnost, ki jo ustvarjamo in ta je potem tudi vzrok za to, da ustvarjamo karmo. Zato, ker se naš um premika od ene točke k drugi. Naš um 
se premakne iz neke točke k nečemu, kar je izvan nas. Če pa razumemo, da so vsi pojavi enake narave, da so čisto vsi pojavi enake narave, da so vsi enake narave, kakršna je moj um, potem se um več nima, se več ne premakne nikamo, ne premika se več k nekim k nobeni točki izvan sebe in zaradi tega, ker se ne premakne, kot se na takšen način tudi ne ustvari nobena energija. In ker se ne ustvari nobena energija, potem tudi ne velja več, oziroma ne obstaja več zakon vzročnosti in na takšen način potem um najde svojo pot k svobodi. Understanding this reality in like everyday life, how can we start doing that and kind of broaden our, our attention or, or what we have? How can we start that? Just start. <laughs> as soon as you have some information about the fact that the reality might be different than what you think, question yourself. Whenever you are in front of a situation, especially a situation which would trigger some strong emotion, for example, like uh, anger or fear, ask yourself, what is creating me this fear or what is creating me this strong emotion? Is it real? Does it exist the way I think it does exist? This is the way to start. This is a way to broaden your mind, not to stay like we are in our society and as we are taught in school and in the education system, just to look like a horse, yes? You are molded, you are shaped to, to be a good citizen looking in only one direction. Let's change that. And the moment you decide to change, you start to change. Further your meditation goes, for the question you will have, then come back, ask your questions, get your answer and deepen your meditation. Kako bi, kako lahko začnemo s tem razumevanjem dvojnosti, vajnosti v našem življenju? Kako, kako se ljutiti tega za razumevanje te dvojnosti? Ali pravilno? Torej, odgovor je bil, ja, kar začni, enostavno začni. Kadarkoli imaš, dobiš nekaj podatko, informacij o nekem dejstvu, se vpraša, če je realnost resnično takšna, kot ti misliš, da je, ali da je dogačno, kot ti misliš, da je. Zastavljajo se ta vprašanja, sprašuj se, Še posebej, ko se pojavi recimo strah ali jez ali kakšno drugo močno čustvo. Kaj je vzrok, kaj povzroča moj strah, kaj povzroča naše močno moteno čustvo? In ali to resnično obstaja na takšen način, kot jaz mislim, da obstaja? To je začetek, na takšen način začneš odpirati svoj um in ne gledaš na tako slepo samo v eno smer, v smer, ki ga nekako družba se zdi, da želi, da gledaš, da si dober državljan, tem izgledan državljan, pa če začneš stvari odpirati, začneš svoj um odpirati, gledati tudi v druge smeri in poskušaš stvari spremeniti. To je v bistvu meditacija, in skozi meditacijo se ti bo potem porajalo vedno več vprašanj in potem pridi nazaj, vprašaj nova vprašanja in se vrneš nazaj k meditaciji in jo poglabljaš. One obstacle to our progress is to believe that the mind is like a monolith, is like fixed, frozen. But in that amount of time, the amount of time of a finger snap. You have 64 moments of mind. 
a moment of mind give rise to the next moment of mind and so on. This is also part of the law of causality. According to that causality, one moment of our consciousness give rise to the next moment of consciousness, give rise to the next moment, and so on. What is passed on from moment of consciousness to next moment of consciousness is all the memories and all the karmic uh, imprints we have accumulated in the past. So, from the beginning to the end of the finger snap, we have already moved forward of 64 moments. So to say, from one minute to another minute, a huge amount of moments have passed. If you are sad at the beginning of the finger snap, you could be happy at the end of the finger snap. If you are unsatisfied of whatever, if you are angry about whatever at the beginning of the minute, you have far enough time to change that mind. It doesn't have to stay sad. It does not have to stay angry. The mind is very fluid, very flexible. It's not part of the material world, which seems unchangeable. So when I say just start, it means just start. You want to be happy? Be happy. You want to appreciate something? Appreciate it. It's just a state of mind that you can as well create. Ima. To je vse del tega vzrok, um, zakona o vzročnosti. Um, Pripravimo tudi, da en trenutek zavesti, um, je tisti, ki poraja naslednji, trenutek zavesti in vse, tisto, kar se prenese iz enega trenutka zavesti od drugega, so vsi naši spominji, vsa karma, karmična semena od tisti, ki smo jih ustvarili. Ki smo jih ustvarili. Torej, v, samo za čas tega enega tleska, ja, Samo v tem času imamo že kar 64 trenutkov uma, torej je izjemno veliko trenutkov že samo v eni minuti. Ko živimo iz ene minute v drugo, imamo številne trenutke uma in zato lahko, če, če smo na začetku tega tleska um, nesrečni ali nezadovoljni, smo lahko že ob koncu tega tleska popolnoma srečni, zadovoljni. Ena minuta je že veliko časa, da, da da se um spremenimo. Torej, če so ni nobena potreba kot tem, da bi ostali jezni, da bi ostali nesrečni. Naš um je zelo tako, zelo pri, prilagodljiv. Ni del tega materialnega sveta, ki se zdi vsaj um, nekaj nespremenljivega. Um, torej, če si želimo biti srečni, potem enostavno budimo srečni. Mi smo tisti, ki, ki lahko to ustvarimo, ki se lahko to zagotovimo. Of course, that's why it is much easier to create it, because you don't have to run after something objective. It's you who create it. You want to be happy, be happy. Pravijo, da sreča ni nekaj um, subjektivna, ni nekaj, je nekaj sub, vedno nekaj subjektivnega, ni nekaj objektivnega, bo pravi, da sveda, ravno zaradi tega je toliko laže ustvariti srečo, biti srečen, zaradi tega, ker ti ni treba iskati ničesar objektivnega, dosti, da, da si srečen. Uh, how did you find your mission in life and how can you find ours? Kos, 
Kako si našla svoje poslanstvo v življenju in kako lahko mi najdemo svoje poslanstvo? Well, first, I had a certain amount of unanswered questions when I was a kid. From nine, ten years old, where do we come from? Where do we go? Is there something before life, after life, and so on? So I started a certain quest to get this answer. And from answer I got some further questions, and so on. And I discovered when I was 16 the path which could lead me to develop my mind and through the development of my own mind how I could help the others to find their way out of suffering. And that was it. I was happy with that idea. The idea that I can develop my mind of course I will find, through this development, I will find my own happiness, but I will find a means to help the others to find their own happiness. Good. That was my happiness. And that is still. And how can you find yourself, your path? Ask yourself these kind of questions. Try to find the answers to these kind of questions and reflect upon them. It might give you a direction for life. Ja, prvo je to, da sem imel že kot otrok, sem zdaj devet, deset let, toliko vprašanj v sebi, toliko vprašanj, na katere nisem imel odgovora, vprašanja, kot so, odkot prihajamo, kam gremo, torej, kaj se dogaja pred življenjem, kaj po življenju. In takrat potem sem iskal odgovor na ta vprašanja in nekako se odgovori, potem smo mu porodili nova, vedno z nova vprašanja. Potem pa sem pri šestnaestih letih odkril pot, ki se mi je zdela, da mi lahko pomaga, da razvijam svoj um in da na takšen način lahko potem pomagam mogoče tudi drugim. Drugim, da mi lahko pomagam, da tudi oni najdejo srečo, torej ne samo, da bom sam našel neko zadovoljstvo, neko srečo, temveč, da bom lahko pomagal mogoče tudi drugim, da bo našli to srečo. Torej, jaz sem na takšen način odkril svojo pot, pot, ki me osrečuje in ki mi nekako z razvojem, ko hodim po tej poti, razvijam tudi sposobnosti, veščine, s katerimi morda lahko pomagam tudi drugim, da poiščajo svojo srečo. Med tem pa, kot vi v iskanju svoje poti oziroma svojega poslanstva, je dobro, da si ravno tako zastavite vsa ta vprašanja in da poskušate najti odgovore na vsa ta vprašanja in potem premislite o vseh teh odgovorih in potem boste našli na svojo motivacijo, svojo poslanstvo. Zdaj na vprašanje, kaj se mogo odziti, kaj bi vzoroma vzoročnosti. Sam pa čuminjam, da se ni, ne premika pač iz nas sprem, z naše točke. Zdaj pa recimo, kakšne so kakne taki triki, da mi to preprečimo, da bi v njih z nas izhajal, v njih ustvarjal vzoročnosti. Triki, da spetim, kako začeti čist tako nakratko, pač... The first step to deal with this is to understand the mechanism of causality and to understand that the, the phenomena that we are observing is not the cause of our emotions, but it is the result of our emotion. So, somebody pass in the street and give you a slap, you have two ways to react to it. Either you slap back because you are rather unhappy of what has been done, either you tell yourself, one negative karma less. And instead of being unhappy of the slap, it brings you more happiness. It's not masochism neither, yes. <laughs> it's not that you have to look for being beaten or slapped. But when it happens accidentally, it means it's a negative karma which goes away. 
And so your mind does not develop further negativity because here is the danger. The problem is not what you see. The problem is to is how you react to what you see or perceive. When we talk about attachment, for example, you, you see a nice person or a nice cake or a nice piece of chocolate, okay, it's in front of you. Dot. You have created the good karma for that. So it would be stupid to go in the ascetic way and say, I'm good, I won't touch the chocolate. I can resist to the temptation. Well, why you tell this to yourself? You might frustrate yourself much more. Yes, in many ways. Instead, you just recognize this is what I have created. You can eat it and enjoy it. The problem is not to enjoy something in life. The problem is the second moment after enjoyment which is the attachment to it. And then from it comes the craving and the desire to get more, and then comes the trouble. Yes? So, you see something beautiful, you look at it, you, or you see something not beautiful, it's the same actually. The main point is, you just recognize it for what it is. Dot. You try to do not create further projection on the top of what you perceive. So this is the trick. You see whatever you tell yourself. Result of my karma, illusion of my mind, conventional illusion because we deal with it. Yes. The point is not to run out of the society, to deal with it in a better way, which means to understand it in a better way. Najprije pomembno, da čim bolje razumemo ta zakon o zročnosti in da razumemo, da vsi pojavi, ki jih opazujemo, niso zrok, torej, ko vidimo neko pojavo okoli nas, da naše čustva niso zrok, ne vse rezultat naši vzroko iz preteklosti. Torej, naprimer, če hodimo po cesti in nas nekdo klofne, potem imamo možnost Imamo dve možnosti, kako lahko odreagiramo na to. Lahko sveda smo nezadovoljni, jezni, ker se nam je to zgodilo in potem osebo udarimo nazaj. Lahko pa si rečemo, aha, pa dobro, ena negativna karma, ki se mi ustvarjal manj in sem zadovoljen. V isti situaciji imaš potem zadovoljen um, ker imaš eno negativno karmo, ki se je ustvarjal sedaj manj. Torej, Sveda, to ne pomeni, da moramo zdaj razviti nek mazohistični odnos in iskati ljudi, ki nas bodo pretepali za to, da bi se rešili slabe karme. Vendar pa lahko vseeno, ko se to zgodi, če se to slučajno zgodi, takrat smo lahko enostavno zadovoljni, veseli zato, ker imamo tako nekaj slabe karme manj. Torej, težava ni v tem, kako ni v tem, kaj dojemamo, ni v tem, kar vidimo, tveč je težava v tem, na kakšen način odreagiramo na to, kar dojemamo, na to, kar vidimo. Če, naprimer, si pogledamo navezanost, če imamo pred seboj neko lepo osebo ali pa čokoladico ali torko z torte, potem lahko prepoznamo, da dobro, to je rezultat za taj moje pozitivne karme, ki se mi ustvarjal v preteklosti. Novno bi bilo v tem trenutku se vesti asketsko in se nekako si reče, aha, jaz sem močen in zdaj ne bom pojedel te torte. In na koncu iz kakšnega takšnega odnosa lahko razvijaš celo frustracijo in si na koncu popolnoma nezadovoljen. Te več, da nenostavno tak, ko imamo pred seboj kostorte, da prepoznamo, da smo mi ustvarili vzroke za to, da je ta kostorte pred nami, ga pojemo in v tem lahko tudi uživamo, ker niti užitek ni težave. Težava je tisti prvi trenutek, ki pride po užitku. Namreč trenutek, ko se na ta užitek navežemo in začnemo hrebeneti po tem, da bi imeli še tega užitka in takrat naletimo na težavo. Torej, če vidimo nekaj 
nekaj lepega, nekaj dobrega ali pa nekaj grdega, v bistvu tudi to, samo druga stran, druga plat medalje je ista stvar. Dobro, da prepoznamo, kaj to je, kaj to v resnici je in nekako poskušamo narediti to, da ne ustvarjamo novih projekcij na tisto, kar dojemamo, da ne dodajamo nekih svojih projekcij na na to, kar dojemamo, to več enostavno, da si rečemo, dobro, to sem ustvaril, tu je pred mano in seveda se potem v konvencionalni resničnosti ne pobegnemo kar od vsega, ne rečemo, da stvari ne obstajajo, torej, ne obstajajo, da sploh ne obstaja in jih potem kar pustimo, pobegnemo, te več samo prepoznamo, na kakšen način stvari obstaja. Kako lahko pomagamo tistim, za katero se nam zdi, da trpijo, ampak se zdi tudi, da ne želijo naše pomoči? The first thing is to accept that we cannot help everybody. Because if we go in the direction that we should absolutely help everybody, we might also develop an attachment to them and become ourselves very unsatisfied or very unhappy to do not be able to help somebody who does not want to be helped. So since the goal is not to create more unhappiness, we can propose, we can show, we can give a hand to people. Some people will take it, some people will not take it and we cannot force them. So we can use some skills, of course, yes, if you, if you are good in communication, if you are good in this or that, you can use what we call um, skillful means to approach one person, but it can have also a limit. And some people might not have created the openness necessary to be helped. In this case, we can only pray for them, that one day they will open. Prva stvar je tako, da je dobro sprejeti dejstvo, da enostavno ne moramo pomagati čisto vsem. Zdaj tega, ker včasih, če si če si zadamo to, zastavimo to v glavi, da bomo sve čisto vsem pomagali, lahko tudi sami razvijamo navezanost na to in potem na to idejo in potem, ker smo navezani na to idejo, ker ne moramo pomagati vsem, na koncu postanemo nezadovoljni, nezadovoljni zaradi tega, ker ne moramo pomagati nekomu, ki se spod ne želi naše pomoči. In glede na to, da naš cilj ni to, da bi razvijali vse več nezadovoljnosti, je dobro se drugače legiti stvari, torej sveda je dobro, lahko vedno predlagamo ljudem in podamo roko in nekateri jo bodo sprejeli našo pomoč in drugi ne. Sveda imate lahko tudi različne veščine, ki so vam lahko pomoč, ko poskušate nekomu pomagati, morda ste vešči komunikacije, imate kakšne druge veščine, ki vam bodo pomagale, pa vseeno nekateri ljudje enostavno niso odprti za našo pomoč, niso odprti in ne bodo sprejeli naše pomoči in v takšnih trenutkih potem nam ostane samo še to, da molimo, lahko molimo, da se nekoč tudi oni odprejo in sprejmo na pomoč. And I will wish you a good night. If there is any further questions that I cannot take now or that does not pop up in your mind, you are always welcome eventually to come to discuss these questions directly with me anytime. <laughs> za pozornost, vam zaželjel lahko noč in tudi vas pozval, da 
Če iz Markelja časa se pa kakšno koli vprašanje, ki ga še imate, ali pa če se vam bo kasne uporabljalo še kakšno vprašanje, ki vam zdaj se še ni, ste vedno dobrodošli, kako da koli prijetek meni, se bo tudi tudi pogovorim. 